How is it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Griff Talks, and let's just get right into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is just some of the reactions from last weekend. As we know, we had three races. Truck Series was at Gateway, and then Xfinity and Cup guys were at Michigan. So to start things off, the truck race at Gateway, John Hunter Nemechek got a very emotional win for his team. Definitely an underdog team, they don't have the resources that many other teams have, and they came out on top. And if I remember correctly, they did get additional sponsorship this week because of that win. So big congrats to John Niemicek. Good job to Joe Niemicek, and I hope they keep that momentum going. On the Xfinity side, so as you guys have heard, Denny Hamlin had a very close finish with William Byron. Let's just pause for a second. It has been a long time since we've seen a side-by-side -side finish in the Xfinity series. I don't remember when the last time we had a side-by-side -side finish in the Xfinity series is. I want to say 2013 between Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson at Bristol. I'm not too sure, but I think that was the last time. If there's anything more recent, please let me know in the comment section down below. But as you guys know, on Wednesday, Denny Hanlon's win is now what you call encumbered. So this brings up the big question, like should the win even count? Because first of all, Denny Hamlin shouldn't even be in the series in the first place. Like again, he's been in the Cup Series since 2006. So first of all, why is he even in the Xfinity Series? And then to beat out William Byron, who's going for his first career win, and because of a splitter, that doesn't even count anymore. So again, like I respect Denny Hamlin, I respect Joe Gibbs Racing, for what they do and they bring an extra team to Xfinity Series. But to go out there and beat William Byron the way he did, which was great, don't get me wrong, like seeing a side-by-side -side finish, that's awesome. To have that win become encumbered and it doesn't count toward owner's points or anything like that, like it brings up the big question of like, why even come to this series, right? And then finally on the cup side, Kyle Larson gets his third career win and again comes from a two mile track. Kyle Larson beat out Chase Elliott, who ends up finishing second again. And Kyle Larson driving the Lightning McQueen Cars 3 paint scheme proves that he is fast. Now the question is, can he win on 1.5 mile racetracks? Can he win at different types of racetracks? I'm glad he's starting to put races together, but at the same time, can he actually do good at other types of racetracks too, not just these two mile cookie cutter shaped racetracks? So one of the big fallouts from this week was USA Today. They had a article come out and the big topic of discussion is Kyle Larson highlighting the lack of personalities in NASCAR. I went ahead and I read the article and I'll put it in the description down below the link as well. So if you want to check it out yourself. But the very interesting thing about the article was how it was written and it's not the best, honestly. And the, probably the biggest reason why is that this is someone who is not really knowledgeable of NASCAR. The person goes on in and thinks that they know everything about it and how NASCAR should be fixed. And they're like, oh, we gotta get people fighting. We gotta get people all hot and tempered and stuff like that. And that's what makes NASCAR great. Yeah, no. I mean, there's definitely a lot more to NASCAR than just a bunch of ticked off people swinging fists at each other. And honestly, I just think the, uh, the person who wrote this really missed the point. And especially if you misspell Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, and Chase Elliott's names. That's, uh, I really wish you could have done your research more before you started writing it down, you know? I do appreciate though, even though of all the people in NASCAR, they all have their separate opinions and stuff like that. It felt like with this article, everyone could come together to bash USA Today. And if you even look on Twitter when USA Today posted their tweet about the article, I saw Kyle Larson, Brad Keselowski, Landon Castle, Jeff Burton, among other people, tweeting about it and saying how poor of an article it was. The only benefit of the doubt I will give to the writer is that it is interesting seeing a person that doesn't really know much about NASCAR giving their thoughts and opinions on NASCAR because they're like an outsider looking in. And so the interesting to think about is not everyone is like us that is so in-depth and passionate and knowledgeable of NASCAR, whereas this person doesn't know, but like, again, all they care about is, again, 
fighting and, you know, how there is a quote-unquote lack of personality in NASCAR. And one last thing, if this person would have known better and actually know the drivers, each of them do have a personality. So, long story short, I wish the writer was able to do a little more research and actually maybe attend one or two races before giving out their uh, report, if you will. And then, um, you know, USA Today could be a little more credible at that time. So then the next thing I want to talk about is babies. Three different people are in different stages of expecting. So to start things off, it was announced on Sunday that Joey Logano is expecting. They're going to have a kid and I think it was January 18th, I believe it was. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comment section down below. But that's when they're expecting. It's January 18th. Big congrats to Joey Logano. I Sounds weird coming from, my, from me, but no, I think it's great. I'm glad that he is going to become a dad and be a, <clears throat> like a family member. It's great. I honestly have no problems with that. Congrats to Joey Logano, and hopefully your baby boy or girl is healthy and becomes a valued member of society. Then the second on the uh, expecting line is Paul Wolf. Paul Wolf, as you know, is Brad Keselowski's crew chief. There is a chance that he will miss this weekend's race at Sonoma because he is about to have a kid as well. Not him, his wife, of course. But they're expecting to have a kid sometime soon. So because of that, he might be on watch, if you will, and he won't be there to support Brett Kozlowski this weekend. So when that happens, hopefully the procedure goes great. Best of luck to him and hopefully their baby boy or girl is a healthy member of society as well. And then the final one is Trevor Bain. Last Tuesday, they did have a baby little girl by the name of Levi. Baby Levi was born on Tuesday and Trevor Bain, who already has a kid, now has two in the family. Big congrats to Trevor Bain. And then the last thing I wanna talk about before I get into the update of the Griff Dog YouTube channel is I'm gonna preview a little bit on Sonoma and Iowa. That is where all three series are going to this weekend. So on the truck roster list, nothing's too weird. The only thing a noticeable change is that Brandon Jones is in the 99 truck, the one that Timothy Peters flew in. Otherwise, nothing really out of the ordinary or super different that is noticeable on that roster list. However, the Xfinity race, which is also at Iowa, is huge in terms of drivers that are in because first of all no cup drivers none like at all so if you guys are huge on having no cup leeches as kamikaze games will put it this iowa race is huge and if you want to really support these standalone races even if you weren't planning on watching a race just like turn the tv on to fs1 and then if you need to work or whatever just have it on so that we can get those numbers up because again, these are the important races so that these development drivers can develop and potentially do some good in the future in NASCAR's top series. So some of the noticeable driver changes are as so. First of all, Ben Kennedy is making his debut in the two car. Scott Legacy Jr., older name, he is in the three car this weekend because Ty Dillon is in Sonoma. Kyle Benjamin will be in the 18 car this weekend. Christopher Bell will be in the 20 car this weekend. Sam Hornish Jr. returns to Penske and returns to NASCAR in the 22 discount Ford. And then finally, Ty Majeski is going to make his Xfinity Series debut in the 60 i Racing Ford. Now, I know a couple of people have said, Griff, are you going to talk about the fact that the 60 car is being supported even though the 6 car of Bubba Wallace is being suspended? The big argument is that Ty Majeski brought sponsorship with iRacing. Because as you guys know, Ty Majeski is the top iRacing driver in the world right now. So with that being said, he brought the sponsorship over. Daryl Wallace unfortunately did not. And so even though it'd be cool to see Daryl in a car this weekend, sponsorship wasn't there for him. And again, Ty Majeski brought sponsorship over to there. So is it disappointing? Yes, but I understand the reasoning why the 60 car is there, but not the six. And then finally, on the cup side, we do have five road ringers. That is the term used for like road course specialists coming in and doing races in 
the road course races in the Cup and Xfinity Series. So we have five noticeable ones for now, those being Tommy Reagan, who's going to be in the 15 Premium Motorsports car. We got Alan Day, the Israeli driver, who is in the 23 car this weekend, and this is his Cup debut, I might add. Boris said returns to NASCAR as he's going to replace Jeffrey Earnhardt in the 33 car this weekend. Billy Johnson is going to be in the 43 car this weekend instead of Darrell Wallace. I'm low-key disappointed that Darrell Wallace is not racing this weekend, but at the same time, best of luck to Billy Johnson Jr. Hopefully that he can give the 43 team some extra owner points. And then finally, Josh Balicki will be in the 51 car for Rick Ware Racing. I believe that's it. If I'm missing one or two, please let me know in the comments section down below. And so now let's get to my predictions. I think this is going to be a big weekend in terms of first. So to start things off, I predict that every single winner this weekend will get their first career win. Absolutely. I think the time is ripe for that. On the truck side, I have Chase Briscoe getting his first career win in the truck series. He's been doing well. I know his finishes have not been the best, but he's definitely been a little more consistent lately, and I think his time has sprung, and it's time for him to win a race, which I think will be this weekend. The driver I have to watch out for is John Hunter Nemechek. It'll be interesting to see, with the win that he has at Gateway, how much momentum will he bring over to Iowa, and will he be a factor this weekend as well? Now on the Xfinity side, now this prediction goes along with one of the predictions I made at the beginning of 2017, and I said that a first time winner will come at Iowa. And so because of that, I predict that William Byron will get his first career Xfinity Series win this weekend at Iowa. He almost won at Michigan, but now that none of the cup leeches are gone, William Byron will be there to take advantage of it and he'll get his first career win with JR Motorsports. The driver I have to watch out for will be Sam Hornish Jr. Because if you guys remember last year, he drove a few races for Joe Gibbs Racing, dominated at Iowa last year, and now he's in the Penske car this year. It'll be interesting to see if he could redeem himself and get his second win in a row at Iowa. And then finally, on the cup side, I could easily go with someone who has won already, but I'm going to go for a stretch here. Remember how I mentioned last week that Chase Elliott was going to win at Michigan, but he finished second? I predict that Chase Elliott will get his first career win at Sonoma. Now, Griff, you're crazy. Well, yeah, I kind of knew that. But Chase Elliott is one of those people that you wouldn't think is a road course racer, but it's been a common theme these past like few years that we've seen drivers that normally don't do so good at road courses come to the top. Big example I could think of is Martin Truex Jr. in 2013. I never really thought of him as a road course racer, but he ended up winning at Sonoma in 2013. And so because of that, I think Chase Elliott will do the same and will miraculously get his first career win at Sonoma. The driver I have to watch out for was my original pick to be the winner at Sonoma, and that is Clint Boyer. I almost feel like timing is right for him to win because Boyer has won at Sonoma before and plus with 14 because that's what Stewart won that with last year. I think Boyer, who has almost the same driving style as Tony Stewart, I think he definitely has a really good shot to get his first win of the season and his first win since 2013. So watch out for Clint Boyer and I predict that Chase Elliott will get his first career win at Sonoma. So now... This is the point in time where I'm gonna talk about just a little update on my channel. Well, it's not little, it's pretty big. So I guess just the big thing I wanted to start talking about for this is um, this past year, if you will. And when I mean past year, I mean from June of 2016 until now. Because if you guys didn't know already, I have now been a year removed from college. And the best way to explain how I've gone through this past year is that it's been a learning experience. I've learned a lot about cinematography, editing, Photoshop, work world, among other things. And it's been great. It's definitely been fun to learn a lot about just how a bunch of other stuff works. And like with Griff Talks, big goal of that was for me to be more confident with speaking and just being in front of a camera 
it's been all right. Like I'm still kind of learning and working on that. But along the way, you learn a lot about yourself and you learn a lot about kind of, if you will, where your place is in society. And so the big thing is just to start things off moving forward. Even though it's been a good learning experience this past year, it's time for me to actually do. And it's time for me to really put my place into society, if you will. So to start things off, I am, and I really hate to do this because I know quite a few of you have followed me for this specific reason, but I am going to cancel Griff Talks and the Diecast of the Week after this week. And the biggest reason why I'm doing that is to focus more on one more spark. Now, don't get me wrong. I did for a while enjoy doing Griff Talks and Diecast of the Week, but I would probably say this last month, it's really become more of a chore for me to do this versus something I wanted to do. Because honestly, the big passion, the one thing I am absolutely like desiring to work on is One More Spark. So yeah, the big thing is One More Spark and then moving forward with my life. Because the big thing is I want to get out, I want to start doing my own thing, and at this point I think the time is right to do it. So if you must know, on One More Spark, right now I have the first 30 races done for 2001. Like I ran all of them and I've gotten the paint schemes done for those 30 races. And so in front of me right here, you will see all the cars that I have painted so far. I've shown you a couple, but that the biggest thing is I want to wait until the big dance to reveal all the cars and then they'll all be, of course, up for download. Also, another plan is, and I feel like this is one of those things that I haven't talked about, but I want to make it official now. I do plan to make all seven videos at once. And the biggest reason why is consistency. Because I know that during the Dale Earnhardt What If, it's like you had, what was it, like three, four videos out once a week, but then it's like you didn't see part six until June, like five months later. So what I want to do is I want to get all of them done, and then once they're done, I'm going to release them once a week. My thinking is probably every Tuesday or something like that. When the time gets closer, that's what's going to happen. Once 2001 One More Spark is complete, the next project then will be the 2017 Summer Showdown. As of right now, I still plan to do that. And I already have an idea for what track I'm going to use. The only hint I'm going to give right now is that it was a track that the Xfinity and Truck Series used to go to back in the day. That's all I'm going to say. Either that might be too much of a hint or too little of a hint for you guys. I don't know. I don't care. But that's the only hint I'm going to give to you guys. Sometime down the road, I'll do kind of like a reveal trailer, if you will, on where it's going to be at. But again, my focus is still one more spark. So going back to just who I am. The way I see myself is not really much of a reporter, which is kind of what Griff Talks was about, but more of an analyst, if you will. Because honestly, there were a few episodes where it's like, I never really had a chance to really speak my own thoughts. And I was just more reporting it out, like just being like a news, giving you the news, if you will. And when I started Griff Talks, that's not the plan I had. Because the plan of Griff Talks was to, again, speak my mind, like, Griff, I talk, you know, but not just like spewing out information that everyone already knows on either Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Like I want to give my side, my point of view, the way I see the world, because, and this is my opinion, I see the world in a lot more of a different point of view, if you will. Like no one's road is the same. Everyone has a different avenue to where they are at now. And to enlighten you guys on this, like the way I've seen the world, it'll be interesting just to hear it, you know? But the thing is, just going through this Griff Talks and just going through this last half year, I realized I'm more of a doer, not a talker. Now, sure, I mean, I could still like broadcast and stuff like that. Like, I enjoy that. But doing these talks is just something I don't 100% personally enjoy. And 
I like force myself to work on it. And sure, it's a work in progress, but you know, I've at this point almost accepted the fact that that is just not something that is built for me. And especially doing it on a weekly basis, because fun fact, I actually lose a day that I could work on one more spark to do these videos. Now, that statement just shows kind of like where my priorities lie, if you will. Because again, like even though I haven't shown it to you, like one more spark is something I've dreamed of doing for years. Now, sure, I mean, I thought of it like, what was it, last winter? But like, I'm one of those weirdos that like, when I was like nine or 10, I would make lists of future like roster changes. And mind you, this is like back in 2003. I think they're all thrown away right now, but it's like, I had different thoughts of like, oh, where would Elliot Seiler go? Or where would, uh, what would it be like, like Rusty Wallace go if he decided not to go to the two car or something like that. Again, that's just, that's the crazy stuff that I like to think about it is different theories, different what ifs, just analyzing different things. And I've realized that this past year, like that is kind of who I am and where I stand, if you will. So I do ask, as I go through this process, I know a few of you will be disappointed that both the diecast of the week and Griff Talks are gonna be suspended. And just as a side note, it's it, I'm not using the term canceled. I think I said canceled before, don't remember, don't care. The term I'm using is suspended. I'm suspending it indefinitely. Meaning it can come back. And honestly, I wouldn't mind if it does come back. But just where I am at right now, just myself, I cannot take more time doing the Griff Talks and the Diecast of the Week. Because as I said, it's become more of a chore to do this and more of, if you will, a fan service versus something I really enjoy. So again, I just ask that you guys please support me through this. And because of this, One More Spark should be coming out soon. So one more thing I would like to say before I wrap up this video I mentioned it before and I will mention it again. The Ask Me Anything video will still be next week. And that's honestly the biggest reason why I'm doing this announcement now is because next week will be Griff Talks 25 technically. And so that'll be the one where you can ask me anything. What's gonna happen is on Sunday, I'm gonna release a little 30 second video. And in that video, in that comment section, you guys can go ahead and ask anything. I'll have a couple of like, what do you call it? Rules, if you will, on what you guys can ask. But for the most part, it's anything. Anything about NASCAR, anything about life, music, movies, anything. Go ahead and pick my brain. I'm, I'm used to it, so it'll be kind of fun. And then also what will happen is once that video is up on Sunday, it'll be up for, I would say, four days. I would say until 12 o'clock on Wednesday. I'm gonna then privatize the video, I'm gonna sit down right here and I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and I'm gonna answer as many of your guys' questions as possible. And then next Friday, then Griff Talks 25, quote unquote, will be the first Q&A. Because again, just because I wanna give back, I'm gonna do the Q&As monthly. So at the end of every month, I will go ahead and I will have the video up, you guys can ask questions and then I'll answer them. Just something to have a little more of that interaction, if you will. And so finally, because of all these changes, I am gonna utilize social media a lot more. I'll leave the social media links here. And so what'll happen is, each of my um, social media, if you will, will serve a little bit of a different purpose. Twitter is more of like my quick thoughts. And so like you'll see me on Twitter during like races, and if you see like, immediate quick peeps, if you will, that's my, what my Twitter is for. Facebook will be more like updates and vlog or blogs, if you will. And that's just me kind of like giving updates to what I'm doing. And I guess more bigger things, if you will. And like, if there's like bigger, like news things or something like that, I'll probably post on there. And then as you know, Instagram will be just pictures. Probably not gonna use that one as much, but I'll still use it every so often. So if you guys can follow me on each of those social media platforms, that would be great. Also, just a thought that I have too, is I kind of want to utilize Griff Dog 2 because the point of that channel is kind of like my other category because there are times where it's like, I want to talk about just stuff about the world that's not related to NASCAR. 
and I kind of want to do that there. I don't really have any like force plans with Rift Dog 2 yet, but definitely something for me to keep in mind too. And then again, I'm not like forcing anything on myself, but like, you know how I have that raw thoughts series? I might expand on that a little bit. And it's like, if there's a big like NASCAR discussion topic, and if a lot of people are asking me for my uh, input slash opinion on it, then it won't be as much like a raw thoughts video. It'll just be a thoughts video, if you will. So yeah, that's kind of uh, where I'm gonna go in life right now. So it's a lot, but the biggest thing is one more spark. Because I know a lot of you have subscribed to this channel because of my NR1003 content. And honestly, that is where I want to go. And I'm serious about it. Like, I have thoughts like at work where it's like, uh, where it's like, oh man, I can't wait to fix that uh, Looney Tunes car or something like that. Like, it's really dumb. Like, I, I think very weirdly, but I've accepted who I am. I'm probably not gonna answer any questions in this video because I wanna have it saved for Sunday. Um, but yeah, that's really, really it. I feel like I might be missing one or two things, but um, yeah, so just as a wrap up, no more diecast of the week for now, no more Griff Talks for now. My focus is solely one more spark. And um, yeah, this, this is a point in time in my life where some changes are gonna occur. Besides this, I'm talking about like myself in life. I'm not gonna get too in-depth or specific now, but in the next few months, I'm planning on changes to happen. So with that all being said, thank you guys for the support this past half year. I've really appreciated it. I'm definitely disappointed that I'm suspending this for now, but it is all for the better. So, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been an honor for me to talk to you guys this past half year or so, and it's been a ride. But you know what? Second half of 2017 is just around the corner, and let's make this one a heck of a good one. So, again, and I've been a robot saying it, but I greatly, greatly appreciate the support. All the comments, all of the reactions, it's great. Like... You guys have given me a voice, something that I haven't had for years. It's different, it's cool, it's appreciative, and you guys rock. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you next time.